Hey everyone, welcome to this new video. Today I'm going to tell you how to design an Instagram carousel in Figma. So Figma is a very good tool to design. It's free. Most of, like You get a good uh, free subscription plan, which is amazing, which I'm using by the way. And uh, I, f I find it very easy and very, I don't know, very intuitive to create as well to, to use. So you can see here that I have already designed quite a lot of um, carousels with uh, Figma for my Instagram account. And I've also created many pages for like, for example, a tutorial that I did. And you can also find it on my YouTube channel as well, uh, where I talk about how to design and follow this, this tutorial right here. Um, I also have some quotes here. So it's very convenient because I can just copy paste the template. And you can have also a uh, Instagram template that I did and you can download it for free. So uh, it's very, I think it's, it's pretty good. You see, you can get a lot of explanations. Um, so it's for Figma, obviously. And you get, yeah, you get some carousel tutorial templates, quotes as well in this actual case. You get a um, structure template as well, where you can understand how to structure your Instagram carousel, basically. Some headline templates ideas that I have here and uh, call to action templates as well in the size that you can use. So you can have it for free. I'm going to put the link in the description. So if you want to have it, please. It's, yeah, you can you can if you want to. But if you, if you don't want, it's fine as well. So I'm going just to show you quickly how to, how do I design my, my own template. So I already have a ending call to action uh, template already pre-made so that I don't, ha don't have to redo it again um, with my username here, my domain name, uh, the year, you can do whatever you want basically around here and the call to action. So the goal basically is to have a, a good um, catch at the beginning, something that is very eye catching for the people to look at it. So what we can do is simply, what I usually do is I can take this one right there. So it's already pre-built. What I'm going to do is simply control C, control V to copy paste it. Then I just like to make it <laughs> other like that is very clean, I like it. And then I already have pre-made all of the top corners here with the page numbers. Usually the page number I do it at the end. You see, like I just, mod I basically copy paste this one here. I just, what I do is I take this one here, the empty, empty frame. So if you want the reference, uh, shift R to have the rulers, and then you can see uh, the space I have. So here, well, I don't really need that actually. I can just show you here. So to show that I have I, on, on Mac, it's option. I'm not sure on Windows, uh, you select the, the text option and then you can see 120 by 155. It doesn't really matter that much if it's really that centered or not. I mean, if it's like 150 here and 151 here, for example, it's not going to be much about or people don't really care that much about it. This one is 80. And here usually it's going to be also 80 and we, I usually put this one right there, for example, or here, and then I write something else here, like that, hello. And I just put it like that. Yeah, so pretty easy to do right. Um, for my font, it's a paid one. So uh, yeah, it's a, it's not someone something you can get for free. If you want something for free, what I really like is Helvetica. So Helvetica, no, this one. It's pretty good and it looks very, very nice. You see, it's pretty similar as well. So it's it's totally free and it's pretty aesthetic. So I really like it. But I don't know. I find the Montreux Classic pretty pretty sweet and pretty nice. So I, I I keep this one. Yeah. So usually what I do now is I try to find a good title. I try to make it not too big. You see, and not too small as well. I usually use, for example, how to design in Figma. I usually try to use the, what I call, what is named the League Gothic. It's what I think most people use. I, I have the free one. Usually if you want to have the really, the, the best value, you should buy it. Even if it's quite, I think it's $250, uh, which is quite expensive, right? <laughs> but uh, I think it's pretty, I don't know. If you have the money, I think it's a pretty good investment because you can use it like for a long time. Like you have it for forever. So you see, I just try to, it's usually by eye. I don't really have a specific template or anything, for example. And then what I like to do is click on this 
little present icon up there and it's going to charge a new page where you can visualize your and then option fit scale and then you can see your your title here you can see that i just pressed the, my, my my arrow keys and i can move around it to see if it's you know pretty um smooth in terms of transitions you can see here that i, I like to have this thing here so um yeah for the just for the title for example if i ought to design well, my bad how to design in Figma. It's the wrong size. Okay, perfect. So let's go for 450. Bleak Gothic. Oops. Sweet. Um, it's a little bit too large. You see here the space in between is a little bit too large. So I usually try to get a good one like that. But it's pretty nice. Um, you can do like that. So usually it's by eye, right? Anyway, you have the, the main title right there. And if you want to do the transition, what I advise you to do is select the, the, two, the two shapes. So yeah, I forgot to say that, but the shapes are 2400 by 2400. And if you want to have a nice transition, you stick each of them together. You create a circle, for example. So O. Then what you do is create a circle right there. Put it at the... Whoop, where is the third? Okay. Create at the end right there, for example. Make it white. You can make a smooth drop shadow right there. So we can say 15. Does it look good? Let's check. Looks a little bit too real. Not too real, but too, too visible. I want something a little bit smoother. Okay, I like this one. Perfect. Let's do maybe 200 actually. Yeah, okay, good. And so what I do now is simply copy paste it on the same you don't move it at all you keep it on the same spot the same position and then what you do is you drag the where is the second one do i have it no, okay what oh, okay my bad i just copy paste the drop shadow <laughs> make sure to not copy paste the drop shadow copy paste the circle you control c control v command c command v and then you take this one and you just drag it to the 38th um screen I mean, here is the 38, but for you, it's on the other, other frame you want to have. And you just don't move it at all, and it's going to fit. And you see, it's going to do a smooth transition. You don't see it here because it's on a computer. I cannot drag it. But when you go on, on Instagram, it's going to make something very smooth. I did it. I did right there. I took this one from Square Dacademy. On Instagram, they do a lot of these circles right there. And so I took this from them. If you find it, it's, it's the reason why. And it's very, very smooth, so I like that a lot. Actually, you should check them out. They do very good work in terms of Instagram slides. And so basically, that's everything you need to know. Then after that, it really depends on your style for what you create inside. Try to make something not too big and not too small in terms of writing so people um, can, can read it. Don't make something with too much text. People don't read when it's too much text. You need to have as little text. Or you see, it's, it's not that much, so you can easily read it and try to have nice headlines on my titles to capture the people, the person, um, person's interest as well and keep them interested in your post throughout the whole thing. Yeah, if you want to export it, you just select the whole thing. So for example, if I want to select all to say no without being rude, I just select all of them like that. And then I simply press export PNG, keep it on one times. Otherwise, if you switch it, Figma is going to duplicate it. Not duplicate it, but make it two times bigger. And this is already the, the quality of your post is going to be pretty good, actually. And yes, that's all. I don't know if it's a very good tutorial. I try. You can see here how I did it. You see with a headline and a number presentation and little text. I keep going. Here at the end, I try to make a final checklist of all the skills you did. I mean, all the elements that were talked about in the post. And then a call to action at the end. But you can find all of that in my Instagram template as well. It's not really an ad, but... I think that I explained it well better in here than uh, on this video. I really hope you find some value in it. And uh, yeah, see you for the next one. Bye.